What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today, we have a very, very special guest. Let me tell you right now, this guy has been amazing in my life personally, in many people's lives for many years. He has been a personal mentor of mine. He is also my coach, and I want to probably say that because I'm always a preacher of coaches need coaches. He is also a tremendous leader in the fitness space. He's a personal trainer, also life coach, I want to say, because he helps a lot of people with other aspects of their lives. Let us welcome the one and only Waldo Echevarria. What's up, brother? <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, appreciate the uh, warm welcome. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. You deserve it, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm actually honored. Honored to be here with you guys and appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Of We're course, excited bro. to have you, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've you. been talking about it for a while, I, you know, in our in our coaching sessions. And I was like, yo, we got to make this shit happen. Yeah, I, I need to uh, record that little clip of that introduction. That's, <laughs> that's how I want to be introduced from now on, like in parties and everywhere I go. <laughs> that's it. You're going to go to your, you're going to go to your, your, your fiance, but a baby. Listen to when this. I wake up in the morning, <laughs> and the alarm goes off. This is what I want to play. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> She'll throw the alarm at him. <laughs> She's like, well, the here. You're like, what? I love it. Yeah, Bro, man, thank you. I want to dive into this, man, because, you know, you've been a great example, not only for my life, but for many people's lives. You know, I know some of the story, but I want to dive in really deep. Take us back to, to when you first got introduced to this space. What got you to even want to get into the training space? And most importantly, because... You don't see this all the time, but what's maintained you and what's kept you going and evolving in this space? Because I think there's a lot of things we're going to go into where a lot of coaches tend to fall off the train. Yeah. And you're an example that you have it. Yeah. You've only kept getting stronger. Appreciate it. Um, wow. Okay, let's do this. So um, I went to college to, to, with the intent of becoming a doctor one day. Uh, I wanted to go pre-med. So went into college, uh, was a biology major at first, and then we're like, I was like, no, this is not what I want to do. And I switched over to physiology. And when I got to physiology, I'm like, I love this. This is my jam. Um, and it just came easy to me. And uh, I went ahead, graduated in, with my bachelor's degree of science in physiology. And I uh, made it a point to work at South Miami Hospital for like a year, a little bit more than that, as a physiologist in the cardiac rehab department. And my idea was that I was going to just work there for a year and prepare for the MCAT and then just take a little break and go to med school after. Um, but while I was there, I was like, why would I want to be a doctor? I don't really like this, this space here, the white walls, the somber feeling and everything. So I started applying to Equinox and I got a job there. Um, I was the youngest coach at the time at Equinox. Where was this? This was 2005. Had just opened, right? Yeah, it had just opened. I was part of like the initial team there, and I was the youngest one. I was like 22 years old, like barely <laughs> legal to drink, you know. So, um, and then I I found my calling when I did that. Within that first year, uh, I just got my bearings on working with people on you know, on that experience. And I, I fell in love with the field. I fell in love with, you know, the potential, potential I saw in it. I saw in it. And at the end of the day, when I, when I was in college, I remember you know, one of my professors was like, there's not a lot of money to be made in this uh, field at the time. Uh, you know, you can either work with a professional team, um, work at a gym as a trainer, but you got to do this because you love it. And then the opportunities could, could come or you can go and pursue an advanced degree and then do something with that. But uh, you know, I just went out on a whim and I think I got lucky. I think it was just a matter of, of good timing too, because the fitness industry started really growing legs and taking off at that time. Uh, and I saw a lot of opportunity and never looked back. I, I scratched the plans to go to med school. I found a lot of success at Equinox. I worked there for, I think almost 11 years. Um, and it was wonderful to say the least. I think I, I, I met some long lasting you know, friends and that I can even call family at this point, um, and, and clients that I worked with that, that also became friends and family. Uh, so that, that was really the course, you know, that, I, that they got me there. Um, at the core of it, passion, you know, you asked like what, what allowed me to stay in this space and not only stay there, but grow and evolve and it, it's, it's a passion. I think that I, I, I tell my clients this all the time, I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed and to do what I do and have the level of fulfillment that I have. 
And I think at the end of the day, that's something that we all look for. We look for happiness, deep health that feels fulfilling. Uh, and then if we can do that while touching other people's lives, while connecting with other people, I think it's grand. And so that being said, I've been able to still grow because I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about helping people. I'm always challenging myself to take it to the next level and to make a larger impact. And um, that's what's got me here today. I, I got to say, you know, I think one of the things that stuck out to me is like, you know, you, you dove in it from the beginning because of passion and you took it seriously as like a career where yeah. I think a lot of people, especially during that time at the beginning in 06, 07, 08, a lot of people who are getting the tra training career, it was kind of like you know, the personal training career. They were like, oh, it's a stepping stone and then I'm going to go to something else. This is never a full on career. This only lasts for maybe five years. Correct. You know, so how, how were you able to deal with that? Because I'm sure you've heard from maybe family, friends, clients, and yourselves. Yeah. Is this all you're doing? Is this what you're going to keep doing? How do you keep going through that? I right? love that question. I think that's, um, even to this day, sometimes I get that question and I'm like, my business has grown. Like I'm doing really well. Um, and there's always that sort of internal pressure that I may put on myself and that we all put on each other. Um, and then the external one, right? Like, the expectations. Are you going to do this for how much longer? Or like, how do you, you know, wh where are you going with this? And I think I faced that challenge when I was a little younger in my career. Often I was like, well, I'm going to do this for like the next three years and then I'm going to do something else. Uh, and then what's the next best, th best thing? But I think I've just made, made a mindful effort, an organic effort to evolve and grow with it little by little. Uh, I, I saw the personal growth in my life. Um, I saw the, the changes and, and, everything and the impact that I had in my, on my clients' lives. And that's what kept me going. Uh, and I think that time is everything. Again, time and place. I think the fitness industry has opened so many doors, uh, so many opportunities to, to find yourself, uh, to learn, to be better, to reach a larger audience and everything. It wasn't like that. But because social media has grown to the extent that it has, it's given people so many opportunities in different spaces, not just obviously the fitness industry, but in, even in my space. And um, that's, that's also another tool that's been handy. Did anyone give you shit for switching from a medical degree to going to the fitness space? Because I can imagine that it must have been something, right? Yeah, that's a solid question. So... I remember <laughs> graduating and came like I got myself a good job and you know my, my parents were never very involved in my in my education um, I was the first one to go to college in my family and graduate from college and you know I never really showed a report card to my parents or a progress report or anything like that it was just you know on my own uh, and no one ever said a thing as long as I was doing my thing and doing well but when I did, and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing. They're like, really? You're going to count reps and clean sweaty people for a living? Like, you're not going to be a doctor? Like, that's it? And I'm like, yeah, but, but, I, but I'm making six figures in my first year because I, that was my calling. And I'm, feel, I'm feeling happy. I feel successful. Um, and I think that it's one of those things where maybe it's a generational thing um, where people are like, well, if you go to school, you got to go because you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be a lawyer or something along engineer. those lines, an engineer or some sort. But anything else is just a waste of time. Like, why would you even go? So, yes, the answer to your question was yes. Uh, and even then, even while I was five years in, it, people were like, well, is this, is this it? Are you just going to be a trainer? Is this, is this it? And I think it's, it, up, it opens up another dialogue, which is in this space, you know, you can be called a trainer and have tons of qualifications and you can still be called a trainer and have zero qualifications, have like, you know, an overnight uh, certification and say, okay, yeah, I'm a trainer. Um, and, and so the range is just, it's wild. Uh, and I think that, you know, I made it a point throughout my career to not just be a trainer, uh, to really educate myself. Um, I consider myself a coach by, by definition uh, because that's what I do. I coach people through, you know, the pillars of their health, uh, through nutrition, through movement, through mindset. Uh, it's a full encompassing approach for me and I'm coaching them. I'm definitely not just training them for like an event. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that when people, it depends also how much I want to talk. If I say, if people ask, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, I'm in the fitness space. 
leave it at that, you know. Um, if I say I'm a trainer, that's because I also want to keep it short. They're like, okay, cool. Everyone knows what it is. If I say I'm a coach, they're like, well, what do you coach? And like, where does that go? So it depends how much I want to talk. Um, but yeah. It's pretty cool because you're, because from what Anthony, Anthony speaks very highly of you. That's how I know of you. And eventually I'm going to train with you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, eventually, we go. eventually. Um, it's, it's funny because, yeah, your family and people have that perception of, yeah, coach, trainer, but the people you are working with are high, you know, high net worth individuals. Mm-hmm. These are professionals mm-hmm. in their industry. Doctors are training with you, attorneys, uh, top level realtors, different people are working with you. And it's funny because they're listening to your guidance yeah. and people have that false idea of what success is and what reality is, but you're creating impact in their lives in an area that you are the master. So whatever you tell them, they're doing it. If they need to eat that way, they're going to eat that way. If they need to fall the way, they feel fall that way. And I think the industry for a while, like what Anthony was saying, wasn't gaining respect. Yeah. And now you guys have, the whole industry as a whole has, I kind of like elevated where now people are looking at these, these influencers, looking at people within your space and they're holding at that same level because everyone wants to do preventive medicine. They don't want to just wait and go to a doctor when they have diabetes or, you know, they can't move or touch their, their toes. Now they're seeking your help and your guidance. So they already can run and be with their kids. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. hundred percent. It's very true. So Waldo, where, where do you see, cause you know, one thing you brought up, you know, like two pe- people can be defined trainer with all these certifications, qualifications, you know, eventually you can say like, you consider yourself a coach, what I 100% agree. And I say there's a difference between a trainer and a coach. Uh, but let's say now everybody can slap that trainer coach label and have not much under the belt. Um, and then you got a lot of people have a lot on their belt and then there's people are viewing them practically the same. Yeah. Um, what do you feel that needs to happen in the industry? Cause you've been in for so long, you've worked with some of the best yeah. leaders and, and innovators in the fitness and health industry, yeah. um, world renowned names. What do you think that needs to shift to kind of show people the difference between a, a high qualified coach yeah. Versus a coach who, and doesn't mean that, because there could be coaches who are good coaches who just started, doesn't mean that they're bad, but then there are coaches who don't take it seriously. Yeah. You know, so how do you separate that so people can identify what a, what an actual coach is really doing, what the weight they carry versus one that doesn't, doesn't yeah. take it that seriously? I got you. Uh, I, think the, I think the solution is actually very simple. Uh, maybe difficult to construct, but simple. One of the reasons it's so ambiguous and it's like, okay, well, trainer or coach or where do I go with this is because of the lack of credibility and connection within the medical system. Like people feel a certain way and they go to the doctor and then the doctor says, okay, well, you need to lose weight and you need to uh, start taking these pills for your blood pressure or for your cholesterol, whatever. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Right. But what if that doctor turned around and said, hey, Um, here's a prescription to see this coach and your insurance is going to cover this preventative care. And I want you to see him for like three months. That doesn't happen because the insurance is uncovered and there's no credibility behind it. So, you know, allowing coaches to, to, to find a certification that that's like board approved to be able to take insurances uh, where the trainer can establish a strong business rapport and relationship with physicians. And when I say physicians, I'm talking medical doctors, plastic surgeons, um, orthopedic surgeons, you name it, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, right? Like, I, I think we can all agree that there is such an impact in exercising when it comes to regulating your body. It's like, I think it's the number one cheapest most available type of medicine in the world. It helps with depression. It helps with anxiety. It helps with fat loss. It helps with your ego. It helps with like, you name it. And so you've got this strong network of all these, you know, medical professionals who could be referring people to trainers. And, um, but that doesn't really happen. And, and yes, like I think through my career, I, I have established a relationship with physicians to do that and, and see a referral system. But, I mean, it's nowhere close to where it should be. And I think that 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 should be something that trainers look at and coaches look at today. Say, well, what does my referral system look like, right? Um, Am I really looking out at the best interest for my client? And doctors should be asking themselves the same question. Am I really looking out at the best interest for my patient, right? Can, Can I do more for this person than just prescribing them a pill, 
And I think that's where the solution lies. So, so two things here. Where can there be, where can a more awareness around this start between the medical industry and the fitness industry coming together and actually being there, actually taking the, the patients or clients' intention more intentionally and working in that matter? And then also to what are some of the things that you've done to construct your own referral system that's been strong over time that other young trainers or experienced trainers that just don't know how to put something together that can do it? And then what are some things that you would like to see that would bring more value to this whole conversation we're having right now about this topic? I think that uh, industry leaders, the directors of these programs and universities and things like this need, need to create more awareness in their programs to say, uh, you know, once you get your degree or even if you don't get a degree and you get a certification, if you want to be able to take your career to the next level, look into this, you know, uh, certification or this license that's going to allow you to do that. Uh, but the awareness needs to start at the top. Like, you know, people people go to college. Like, I, I initially went into college saying, okay, I want to I wanna be a doctor, never not, never knowing what it really took to be one. And, and, I, and I think that's, you know, I think that's a large percentage of students. They go through college and, and they're like, well, I want to do this. But they don't know what it's like. They don't know what it is until, unless they do an internship or something. Uh, but if there was a little bit more awareness from the top down in terms of what you can do and where you can go, it would help tremendously. Um, and for those where it's a little too late uh, because they graduated or, 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 or chose not to go to college and have done, you know, found other resources to improve, which is also absolutely great. Um, the thing is to, to find and create your network. Like you have to do it yourself. No one's going to show up on your door, knock on it and say, hey, I'm a doctor. I want to give you my clients. Like you do have to hustle a little bit. Um, and that's where you, you have to look at your business as an entrepreneur and say, what is best for my clients? Like, how can I, how can I add value to my clients? How can I give them more? Um, like, like you said a little while ago, like they already listen to me if I tell them, you know, eat bananas for breakfast and like do this, like they already listen. Uh, so I, so we have trust covered, which is huge. Now, if I say, this is a very good doctor. I think you should see him and get some blood work and find out where you are. Then that helps. Uh, there's instances where maybe, you know, I, I, you should probably see a psychologist for this. You're going through a very critical time in your life. You're going through a divorce. You're going through something like this. That helps too. But it's establishing a rapport, establish, establishing that relationship, creating that, going out, seeking these professionals, whether it's in a networking event or whether you're going out yourself and, and seeing what it's like with them and creating relationships. But definitely that's what I, I think that coaches should be doing to take their, you know, their game to the next level, be able to offer their, their, their clients more. It, are insurances covering uh, personal training or no? No. Uh, why? Uh, because that opens up another, another can of worms. Is it good for insurances to do that? I mean, is it, what happens to the pharmaceutical industry when people start getting healthier? That's what I was about are, to are tell Are we going to get nasty in, the, <laughs> in, the, in this podcast? Yeah. I mean, if, if what happens to the pharmaceutical industry if people all of a sudden are just healthier because, you know, everyone's working out and everyone's eating healthier. And, like, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we look at how, how, how educated or well, uneducated people are when it comes to the nutrition space. Like, there should be a foundation level of education and of awareness when it comes to the nutrition space that people should all have like basic financial knowledge and basic nutritional knowledge and basic movement knowledge and uh these are things that maybe the school system should should, should look into even alone what what the, what the hell the american heart association has on their website is trash and it has and it has it's I, ridiculous when was the last time that was updated when was the last time a lot of these things were updated so i think it would be a huge blow to the pharmaceutical industry if people were healthier and uh, look at look at you know not not to get even more controversial, but look at COVID. Uh, part of this is just mass hysteria and fear driven because people. This is a, it's like a it's an it's an a, it's a wake up call. It's a rude awakening. It's like all of a sudden like oh shit I can die. I'm not I'm not healthy. Like I don't exercise and I don't I don't mm -hmm. eat well and my, I you know I'm overweight and all of a sudden it's like a big reality check and people are freaking out. And then on the other side, you got like a lot of healthy people that are I'm like, oh, it'll be it'll be fine. You know, I, I trust in my immune system. It's gotten me here. It's going to get me through, um, you know. So, it, again, it, 
I think that that there there's a lot of improvements that can happen in, in the school board through the government. It's a, it's a big thing. It's a big deal. I mean, everyone already forgot about COVID. Yeah, COVID's I mean, not even on the news. Everyone's looking at Johnny Depp. Then uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no one really, isn't that crazy. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It's and the next best thing or the next yeah. thing. The war, the this, the that. Yeah. 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 So it's like, well, what's the next thing? I don't. And I agree with you. I don't think pharmaceutical industry is. You know how much money they're they're lobbying. And these doctors, think about it. When you have pharma, a, a, a hot pharmaceutical rep, she comes in and she's telling <laughs> you, hey, you know, I'm going to take you out to dinner and I'm going to give you a kickback of like 100 grand a uh, month to, to give this heart medication. What are you going to do? Give the referral out to, to a trainer or take that 100K? The ethical way would be the, the high moral ground is to say, hey, I'm going to give it out to the trainer, but really what would be the, the percentage that would do that because it's it's dirty i know i know i think at the end of the day money money talks when it comes to those things and it's and it's tempting and um yeah i don't i don't know what's the closest thing that that we can get to around that i know uh, i know we had a little conversation one time we were talking about some stuff with uh, precision nutrition you're saying some working with some insurance based stuff yeah we were talking about a little bit about that definitely i would if you can share you know dive a little bit more into that because i thought that was interesting yeah i mean i'll, I'll share as much as i know um, cause I'm going through it myself too, but, uh, there's an organization, the NBHWC, um, organization and they they offer a, um, a certification and it's a master health coach certification and, uh, they got approved April 1st, 2022, uh, and given a taxonomy code for, for, for those people that have hold this certification and it's, it's um I'm taking it through Precision Nutrition because Precision Nutrition is offering the content and the coursework, which is about seven months long, to prepare you for this test. It's crazy. And this test requires you to to have an accredited course before you test. And so you have to go through it before you test. And so um, yeah, I'm going through that now, but I feel like that's a game changer. Um, as I dive in a little bit deeper, I'll find out more how, you know, I can, I can, uh, what sort of opportunities that brings into the business. Uh, but it would be a game changer because that exactly is the solution is to, is to, is to, you know, have the credibility, start working with physicians. Um, you know, think of a situation where, a plastic surgeon, right? People go to the plastic surgeon all the time because they want to get a gastric bypass or a gastric sleeve. They want they want to lose weight the easy way. And the plastic surgeon has to vet the individual and say, okay, is this is this is this a good idea for you? You know, are you ready to go through a procedure where you're gonna lose like 30 or 40 pounds? And then are you gonna be able to sustain that loss? Are you gonna be able to keep it off? How educated are you? when it comes to nutrition in your body to be able to do that. And, um, and, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's difficult to do. I'm sure that there's scenarios where the physician has to turn them away and say, you're not really ready for this. This is not a good move for you. Come back to me in three months after you've shown me that you've lost 15 pounds and that you can do this. And so in that situation, the plastic surgeon can say, hey, uh, why don't you go see a master health coach that's going to help you with, you know, some of your issues and come back in three months. And now the insurance kicks in. And the insurance kicks in. Boom. You know, so... So through this accreditation, you're allowed to be able to take insurance. Correct. Correct. That's, That's amazing. That's a big game changer. Yeah. Everyone at Hialeah is going to be doing insurance. It's like, <laughs> how do I get this? It's blowing up. And, oh and, and like, God. I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know anybody yet that has it. I don't. So you're going to be the first one in Miami. I, I don't know. Whoa. I, 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 Bro, I don't Waldo, know. everybody's going to be at your house talk on the like this. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, I have insurance, man. Train me. I don't know how it's going to work. I really have no idea how it's going to work. I'm being candid and transparent with you guys. Can can say more on it because I don't know. Um, but I'll find out sooner or later. The biggest play, though, since you have it, now when you build your team, your team can also take, your team can also coach people because you're the holder of the insurance. That's my understanding. TVD, but that's my understanding. That would be also a, a, a game changer because the umbrella holds it. And so it's if, like going in a clinic, like, like a physical therapy correct. clinic. You have your, your a physical your, therapy assistants. Yeah. And yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that those are the types of things that are. But again, this. Oh, that's interesting. This just got this just got approved like by the government a couple of months ago. I mean, it's not 
you know, I, and, and, there, and, and it's not like this was released on a flyer and that everyone in the fitness industry got, a, got an email on these updates. Nobody well, everybody's going to get a notification <laughs> after this After podcast. this, you're going to be like, oh, what is it that you did? Like, I'm trying to find it. Uh, but check out Precision Nutrition. Check out their uh, Master Health Coach certification. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. And John Berardi, well, man. John Berardi. Seven, seven months to get it. So the barrier entry is pretty high to get in there. You got you to take some, some time. And then, you know. If this is new and no one's doing this, I mean, right now you just have a blue ocean. So it's like you got to like run after it and make sure yeah. you start getting all yeah. those clients. And yeah. then this is something that's going to be, I can already see universities yeah. incorporating this, like teaching the kids how to do that and start getting certified already because that's already out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm really curious to see how that evolves. Uh, it, it's obviously, it's, it's new. It's very attractive. I'm curious to see how it evolves, what sort of restrictions they put on it and what it looks like. I'm sure it'll, I'll have a, a better idea as, as the time comes, but yeah. that I think that's going to be a true game changer, and, I, and I'm really excited to see because I think it's also going to allow for a lot of the coaches that have been in the space for years to feel like a sense of like, how do I say, more level consistency, um, and also it's kind of like a relief of like, oh, we have something here we know it's guaranteed. For sure. Um, and then also for new coming trainers, it's like they look now more forward to like, wow, I'm, I can do this like a therapy clinic i can do this like a chiropractor clinic yeah. i can do this like a cl like any clinic yeah. i have my own per se my own clinic and i can collect uh, payments through insurance this is game changer so i think it also increased the rate of more coaches coming into this industry agreed i think i think to a certain extent you say okay i'm gonna i'm, gonna, I'm going to most of the time the route looks like this someone you know you start in your in your fitness industry career and you say okay i'm gonna be a personal trainer and then you work in a big box gym for a while and then you grow out of that and then you have to take two roads either either you start your own thing like either you open up your own gym or you go independent um or you go into corporate and you say well now i'm gonna become a manager or a fitness director and you start taking like that corporate move up there but at some point you're gonna come to those crossroads and, um, and I think at the end of the day, you're always coming to that because we're all seeking growth. We're all seeking like the next step, uh, you know, personal development, personal growth, financial growth, and you want to seek those opportunities. So this, yes, this is another step uh, to that. Now, one thing I want to dive into, um, because I think it's important that we definitely touch upon it because of the level of, of value you bring to your clients. When it comes to as far as like what you've learned as a coach, what you teach, what you program, the things that you're actually doing with your clients. Do you feel that there has to be a set foundational um, teaching or, or course that people have to go through to work with clients that you're not seeing now? Do you think what's going on now is fine? What would you say about that when it comes to actually what clients, what coaches are actually doing with their clients when it comes to the coaching aspect? Oh, man. Um yeah, that's, that's like a, a loaded question. Everyone's dealing with so many different things. Um, going back, you know, through the certification that I'm going to now, and then I'll circle back to, to that because it'll tie in. Um, I'm currently working on a, on a case study, and the case study is so complicated. It's like it's this, this lady who she's turning 40, and she's married, and she's got two little kids, and she's really overweight, and she's dealing with anxiety. She's dealing with depression. She drinks every day. She's got low self-esteem. But she's, uh, they, they finally have some time now to be able to, like, exercise and do all these things. And in the case study, I'm, like, thinking, okay, well, you know, what's the best strategy for this person, right? Like, we can go into the, the physical space and say, you know, if you start getting, if you start moving, you're going to start feeling better, right? If you start just, like, counting your steps per day and you start walking, like, it's going to probably help you with depression and all that stuff. That's one way we can go into the nutrition element and say, OK, well, why don't we look at what you're eating? Um, does it make sense? You know, what's the quality behind it? Uh, you know, what what what's what's at the root of your nutrition and what are your habits at like and all that? Uh, we can go into the mindset space. Like, how are you coping with stress? What what are you what are you doing with stress? And I think a good coach has to be able to pretty quickly have two things some sort of system in place where where you get to know who the client is and uh, give them the platform uh, to be able to communicate and say, you know, this is what I want. This is where I'm at in my life. And and then be able to stay very client centered and, and, and strategize your coaching blueprint, depending on what it is that they want and where they're at at their life. Uh, and then be just be strategic in terms of where what is the lowest hanging fruit? Like, where are they going to start uh, and get a big bang for their buck with a low investment? 
uh, and, and kind of get the wheels turning from there. And so you have to, you know, have a system in place where you can, you know, define those things. And then secondly, just, you know, strategize. At the end of the day, it almost doesn't matter where you, where you start as long as you address those topics because they, they do overlap each other. Yeah. Um, I can't talk to you about, you know, uh, stress management without touching on sleep or without touching on you exercising. So they do overlap, uh, but you, we definitely need to know how to break them down and, and touch on them. So I definitely want to shine a little bit more light on this area because I think a lot of people don't realize the back end work that trainers put for their clients. Good trainers yeah. that take it seriously, like yourself, coaches, um, the programming, the strategy, the system, the 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 pre information you're getting for history information you're getting from this client to then set up. You know, they're basically a case study, and you're setting up a whole program around this current life situation or life that they're living with different components in it and now you have to create a, stra a strategy and plan for them to execute so they can achieve their goals and even then there might be some adaptations along the way because life is life correct and i think i want to i want to keep diving this because a lot of people don't realize this and yeah. they just think it's we sh that's it show up and you're just gonna have me do some stuff no 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 no, 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 no. there's a lot more to it walk us through your process bro walk us through yours oh man um Part of it is I'm, I'm going to challenge you. You know, you say you want to work with me. I'm going to really hold you accountable like a pit bull to the things that you said you wanted and to the things that you said you wanted to do. Uh, and I'll give you the, the stage for that. I want to know why are you here, right? What do you want out of this? Um, what do you hope to learn out of this? And, and how do you want to grow? Like, what are you willing to do to get there? And once I know those things, I'm, I'm going to just be right by your side to help you navigate all those things. And, and like you said, life is life. Life will get in the way and it's ever evolving. And I'm prepared to enter that journey with, with you, right, with, with all of my clients. And as all good coaches should do, you know, you're going to immerse yourself in there. And um, so I'm going to challenge you to know what your values are, to know what your strengths are, to know your identity, what do you stand for? Who are you? Because based on those things, everything else branches off, right? Like if you say, I'm, I'm, I'm this, like I believe in good health, I believe in love, I believe in these things, I'm going to use those things where, as the way that you identify who you are to remind you to stay the course, to remind you to say, you said you wanted this. Now, remember that you are this person, right? So... Be that person and let's go this route and let's go that route and let's do this and let's do that. So definitely, you know, it's, it's, and, and, and again, this isn't a one-time thing. We don't talk about who we are one day. We don't talk about what we want one day. We revisit this on a daily. You know, I've, I've, I have clients that I've been working with for longer than 10 years. And to this day, we'll get together on a Wednesday morning and we're talking about life. You know, we're, we're talking about the things that happen in life. We're talking about you know, managing our, our internal self uh, with our external world. We're talking, we're going deep. And while we're doing so, we're getting jacked. We're losing body fat. We're getting healthy and we're building and we're getting ready for the day. We're getting ready for the week. We're getting ready for the year. We're putting body armor um, and just, you know, rocking and rolling. How long does it typically take somebody? Uh, like, let's say the routine of, of to build muscle mass. Okay. What's like the routine that somebody should go through? Like, to just start getting a little more jacked? Uh, so that, that's, go, that's going to depend on, on the individual. There's some, some variables. I wish I could just give you a str an easy answer. Brian wants like, to get jacked. I want to yeah, get Brian's jacked. like, that's I want to do it in six weeks because summer's right around Brian's the corner. Brian's wondering because he wants to get ready. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to get jacked for, for the summer. So you got six weeks, right? Like, that's usually how it goes. I got six weeks and I want to look like this guy. And I'm like, okay, well, do you have six hours per day to stay at the gym and do this? Oh, wow. Um, you know, moving parts, right? Genetics, I would say, is number one thing. Uh, your, your current, like, what is, what is your experience in the fitness space, right? Like, what do you, are, are, do you have good technique and good foundations with everything? Or are we going to spend the first six weeks just going through strong instruction and creating foundations so that we can build a, a strong house with good bones, right? Instead of like saying within six weeks, I'm going to rush you to get through this. And then you're injured by week three or week four. And then it's unsustainable. Which a lot of people don't understand. A that. lot of people don't they understand wanna, that. I want to sweat. I want to, why am I not doing this? This sucks. <laughs> just go, go to that corner and do jumping jacks mm -hmm. uh, for 25 minutes. You'll get a sweat. But yeah, you're right. It, it, it's people want the fast results and instant gratification and they want to fast track. And it's like, I got six weeks to get ripped. I got six weeks to, you know, 
get a big butt and like tone legs. And um, the reality is that it's your my approach to it is I you hire me because you want to get, you know, more muscle. And that's that's the goal. You want to look better, feel better and be more athletic while you're thinking six weeks. I'm thinking of taking you on this ride until you're 65 and older because your biggest strength is being available, is being actually healthy, right? What good is it to be jacked but have a bad hip, a bad back, and then a bad knee? You're not going to be jacked long that way. So I'm thinking longevity. I'm thinking sustainability. I'm thinking, you know, foundation. I want to teach you how to do it yourself. I want to teach you everything. Uh, so I see it always as like a college level course on fitness. That's what I tell my clients, you know, when we, we begin is here's a disclaimer, you know, you're just starting university level education on your fitness, you know, I love oh, that. that. That's important, man. I'm just taking, I'm taking mental notes right <laughs> you're now. Like, so, I got to write this to <laughs> go to the gym. <laughs> so let's say somebody progresses quicker than six weeks. Yeah. Do you like the perfect form? All right. They're good. Do you cut it down or is your hard? hard stop at six weeks no we keep we keep going because that's where we get into progression Mm. right you you never claim that that little mountain say okay i did it i'm done guys drop mic right you say let me let me go on that next mountain because now that my shoulders are pretty big i think my biceps need some improvement or i feel like my cardiovascular condition needs some improvement and the truth is you get hooked on feeling good and you get Mm. hooked on growth Virtually on everything, right? Like, I think if you pick up a book and you like it and you start touching on a subject that's that draws your interest and you feel like you're learning, you get hooked. You get hooked on being, you know, educated, on, 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 on growing, on being a better person. That's a very inherent thing. It's innate. If, if, you get, if given the opportunity to be better, I think we all choose to do so. And what happens is that when you go through those six weeks and you walk out of there week six feeling better mentally, physically, emotionally, you say, I want six more, and I'm probably going to do this the rest of my life. And that, that's amazing, man. And it's true because a lot of people do neglect that. And when they start going down that path, they don't want to go back. Yep, 100%. And that's, and that's exactly. And that's why I tell people all the time, like, once you get a taste of something that you really like and enjoy, and you're like, man, I feel better. I look better. Yeah. Holy crap, I'm performing better. I have yeah. more energy. You, you don't want to stop. Yep. You know, and then those goals evolve into other things. You know, and that's why it's like you said, I want to work with people who are movers. Who I want to take you to 60 something years old, 70 years old, shit to 80. Why not? Uh, yeah, to your last breath. Yeah, like you. you're going to wipe your own ass. No one is, you're not paying anybody to wipe your ass. That's also a model. Like we're not paying anybody to wipe our asses. You're going to, you're going to do this yourself. Right. So, so how, how do you get somebody who has a short term mindset to start getting them to think long term longevity of the game? I really make it a point to, to educate and plant the seeds. Um, and and this is where we go back to, like, identity and what you stand for and the deeper whys. Uh, you know, if your why right now was, I want to get jacked in six weeks, I'm going to be like, well, why? And you're going to be like, oh, this is a stupid game. Oh, because I want to get jacked. I'm like, but why do you want to get jacked? Well, because it makes me, makes me happier and I can get the ladies and I can like, you know, go out and I feel more successful or more confident. I'm like, and why is that important to you? Well, because I'm going to be better in my career. I'm going to be able to, you know, do these things. I'm going to be a better father. I can go out and play, you know, with my child and be stronger and a better partner to my wife or my husband, what have you. And uh, that's going to be the key to the sustainability factor. You know, it's 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 connecting those dots. So, and when you connect those dots, do a lot of people usually have a wake up call from there, or do you see a lot of people at the moment where they're like, "Man, you're right," and then they start kind of falling off again? You know, th- that can happen. Um, I feel like the falling off happens when 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 they were part of a system that was unsustainable. You know, and I think that's 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 a mistake that a lot of coaches, younger coaches, make is that they're driven to produce quick results. And, and that's just also human nature, right? We want quick results nearly in everything, in anything. Uh, you want quick money, but we also know that quick money is not great money, and neither does it last long. So the same thing with fitness. Quick fitness doesn't last long. And, w- and fitness is like wealth in that, in that mm-hmm. same exact space. I can't just give you a six-pack and give you, you know, uh, incredible conditioning and, and a good physique. I, I can't. I, I can't just magically give that to you. So when you are walking around that way, it's, it's, you can't argue that you earned it, right? Like, you did that, you know? And, and it's, it's uh, one of those things where I was like, 
you know, money, that can be a hand-me-down. Like, people can give you money or you can fall into money and, and things like that. But, you know, people that are that are walking around very fit, especially, uh, I think, after 45, 50 and over, and you look at them and they're fit, they're putting in the work. There's discipline there um, and there's passion behind what they do and there's self-care and that's a very, it's a very respectable thing. I always say the, the three things you can't speed up in life, that you can't take shortcuts, is business, health and your relationships 100 percent. those are the three things and when you try speeding them up they crash down 100 percent. and i want to segue to what you just said about business so when you started your business and you're independent now right yeah. um how was that transition leaving the corporate setting you build a st- strong book of business yeah and then now you're like all right i want to do this on my own yeah. Now, how was that, that that transition for you, and how are you doing now? That's when the gray hairs came out. That's when the gray hairs came out. I swear to God, I had no gray hairs until that moment. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, You're making me sweat. <laughs> no, it was it was fun because you're betting on yourself. Like, who who better? You know, yeah, I finally had my back against the wall, and I didn't have the support of a corporate team to say, Waldo, you're the best. Like, here's, here's this, you know, achievement, and here's this recognition. And, like, um, now, like... I didn't have that. So I found myself alone and having to, you know, blaze my own trail there and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So th- there was some uncertainty in, 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 in regards to how I was going to take off. Uh, but we, we learn along the way, you know, I, I, I think, um, at the core of it, the fuel was to be there for my business, to be there for my clients. They depended on me. So I, there was nothing that was going to stop me from creating something special for them, from creating something that allowed them to say, I trust you, like, this feels safe to me, I'm gonna keep doing this, I'm gonna continue supporting your business, and and that's the value in, in, in taking care of what you currently have. And because I focused on that, I've had many opportunities to grow and to be able to, you know, take it to another level. Oh, and, and just one more thing, and what was like, I guess the biggest obstacle you faced within your business? Um, or, or probably most trying moments for you. Gee, yeah, I, okay. Well, I want to say something real quick. Go for it. I don't know if you're going to bring it up, but I definitely would love to later on add to that and drop into some of the other investment endeavors you faced Yeah. some of those challenges. Because, yeah. man, you've gone through some that I've just, like, a lot of people can't come out of. Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind sharing. Yeah, no, yeah, just, I'll, yeah, I'll share it. That. It's, yeah, it's, that it's, falls into it. Go. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does. Um, So, my, like, the first year i'm like okay so left equinox and i and i and i need to you know open up a gym that was just my my dream i'm gonna open up a gym and i'm gonna get this started um and so i I worked for about a a year and was like looking for spaces and trying to find the right space um and then i thought i found it and it was like a mixed-use building and i was in this with two other business partners and the mixed use building, the first floor was a, a uh, commercial floor, zone commercial. And then the rest of the floor is about another nine or 10 floors uh, were zone residential. And you live and you learn. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be perfect. Like a gym on the first floor of a condominium that has no gym and it's zone commercial. And then all these residents are going to be day one members. It's going to be the perfect opportunity. And I'm going to offer them like a 50% discount. And like, it's just going to be great. And I was super excited. I was really betting on myself in the whole thing. And um, you just never know how things are going to go until you get there. So I get there and residents don't want a gym. They're like, this is our home. We don't want crazy strangers walking in here and criminals. And I'm like, guys, it's not criminals. We're, we're talking good CEOs. It's going to be good business there. A lot of them are actually Coral Gables residents are going to be coming here and it'll bring awareness and money towards the building for improvements. I'm going to give you guys discounts. And they didn't want a gym at any expense there. And so um, before I knew it, I was spending more money on land use attorneys because they would just like call the city and be like, hey, uh, you know, the gym downstairs has 500 people there and they're doing work without, work without permits. And it wasn't true, but the inspector would get there and he'd be like, I don't know, they called me here. Every time they called me here, I have to come. But I see that you guys are fine. Um, and then eventually they filed an appeal against the city of Coral Gables uh, for, for the gym. And that was that. Um, it was obviously disheartening. It was rough. Uh, to go through that because I, I had envisioned it, I had already seen it, and like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very 
goal oriented like that and I don't like curveballs and so it was tough to to part ways with that but it was the best decision I could have I could have made to be honest um because shortly thereafter COVID came around and then they closed all gyms and let because it wasn't an essential business and I would have been stuck paying you know fifteen thousand dollars a month there uh without getting any customers in the door so you were able to get out of that lease that you were in yes because of that caveat that happened I, because of the caveat because of the residents that made it nearly impossible to make it happen there but you already had spent money on equipment oh on yeah you spent tons <sighs> tons tons and that was all my personal money i mean that was my life savings that went in there so talk about like again betting on yourself like yeah. seeing now now i'm in an uncomfortable financial situation and this is in your first rodeo because i remember at equinox you were pursuing that app idea. Oh wow! See, I even I even forgot about that. Yes, and that, and was, that was another bad. big one. That I remember you were sharing with me. Yeah, another that, big investment. That was your really bad. Didn't your partners back you up? Were they? Were you the the financial one, the one putting in the the money? Or I I I was uh sw I was there. I put it was a 50, uh, 50 40, 10 percent uh partnership, and I was uh at fifty percent. And um yeah, there were partners involved in that. But wow. I mean, we had to dissolve the business because it was just not going to happen. That's, that's crazy, man. Yeah. yeah, And it put a lot of stress on the partnership, too. Put a lot of stress on the partnership, too. Um, which, again, blessing in disguise, right? Like, if you're going to go into business with someone, you want to know what stressful situations look like. You know, that, that at the end of the day, and better sooner than later. You know, and it, it could have happened five years thereafter, and then it would have been worse. You know, so um, I think at the end of the day, I try to be an opportunist in these things. And I always tell like younger coaches and younger professionals and, and, and not even younger people. Some of my clients, we have these discussions about being an opportunist when it comes to it. Not just an optimist, but an opportunist. Someone that sees the silver lining. Someone that makes lemonade when life hands you lemons. Uh, because it happens. I'm sure you guys have your personal stories on saying, you know what? I'm going to see what did I learn from this? Right. Oh man, we got a call. We yeah, got a lot, bro. Yeah, it happens. So <laughs> now, if, if you if you throw yourself a pity party and say, "Well, that sucks," you know, like the, I just suck. I, that was my call, and that that was it. I'm just, you know, I'm gonna, you know, hang the gloves now. Uh, that that then you're stuck. Then you're stuck. But if you if you look at it and you say, "Well, what did I learn? How how was this a successful experience in the midst of failure?" Then you're onto something. And I think all successful CEOs and uh, people they they have that trait they look at they look at the silver lining they look at the positive and the negatives i agree i agree and i think another thing too like when you get to hang around yourself your clients who are high ceos entrepreneurs business owners it rubs off like oh, yeah you know i tell people all the time one of the best things being a coach trainer is not only are you teaching them but you're also learning a lot from your clients um you know things that they've gone through business life um and i think it's just a beautiful industry where you can actually meet some very prominent people and learn some very prominent things and i think a lot of people take that for granted when they're in this career absolutely that's a very good point i think i think for the last i don't know 15 years that i've been doing this i've had an incredible an incredible vantage point uh to see these people right work with them hand in hand develop incredible relationships but also see how they navigate through the obstacles of life right what how how did so and so deal with you know managing their newborn and or how did so-and-so go with you know closing their business and starting a new one uh, how did it go with their divorce how does how do what is you know how do the how do these successful people deal with the issues that we all deal with uh and so it does give you an incredible vantage point 100 percent. and life 100%. is about pivoting pivoting strong pivots strong yeah. pivots man strong pivots because we've we've gone through a bunch of them and pivots happen in the moment. I tell people you have business and life happens in the moment. You have to learn how to adapt and, and, and pivot in the moment because that's when you get thrown with the worst shit all the and, time. And that's the, and that's the thing that's important too, because it's understanding your environment and being realistic that things can change. If you're in business and you don't think that you're going to get screwed over, that you're going to get sued, that your business is going to go in a, in a bad time if, uh, financially, then you are not, you're not really planning for it because these are all things that are real. And it's funny because when you talk to friends or family, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, watch out, they're going to, you might get screwed over or this and that. Then don't even go into business because that's going to happen. Absolutely. You should expect that. And it's about pivoting, making those adjustments. And then like what Anthony says, business happens in the moment. And there's times where we've gone into business meetings and, you know, right there, we have a solution to a problem that somebody's having, but 
we don't know how to solve it yet, but we know we have the, the tools and resources to do it. So we put it together and we help and solve their problem. And that's opens up a, a whole new thing for us to get into. For sure. So it's about like just getting yourself in those moments. And COVID was probably the biggest blessing in disguise. Agreed. For a lot of people. For a lot of people. And whoever had bad relationships, both uh, friendships, relationships. I mean, I ended my relationship during the, during the COVID. Yeah. So, so yeah. Anything same, that was practically weak, same here. Same here. No, me and him broke up, broke up with our partners around the same time, apart, which was crazy too, wow. because, you know, he just had a baby, you know, this and that meal, whatever. I didn't have a kid, but, <laughs> but <laughs> this, you know, him. but, but I, no, I, hey, I felt it. I felt it with him, bro. I was in there and I tell this guy, I'm like, look, bro, the, the majority of men, the wealth of experience he had at such a young age, most men are scared to get down that path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like going through a business, doing the transitions, going through all that stuff. And then every day, and I use him too as an example, it's because you just got to internalize in yourself or look into yourself and find those answers because they're there. And like how you did it, you pivoted, you had those three partners and you pivoted and that's some crazy shit because I wouldn't have expected the association would have been yeah. like lobbying to kick you out. It's wild. You know, so you must have pissed off some rich people, man. Man, yeah. <laughs> it must have been the bills, the, the bills. There was this Older little people. old lady, man. I don't even know her name. I don't want to know her name. But she would sit down in the lobby at 7 in the morning. They're dedicated. Dedicated because they have nothing else in their life to do. And I'm like, man, if I get old and I become like that, someone please put me down like a horse. Just like put me down. Like I was <laughs> sitting. I was like, I'd look out the gym and she'd just be sitting there like looking straight at the gym. And she'd sit there from like seven in the morning to twelve in the afternoon, like doing absolutely nothing, just like look and bring out her phone and kind of record things. And she hated the idea of it. And then on top of that, you know, she she sat in for the board of the building or whatever. And like, so that was that. But yeah, strong pivots. I one hundred percent agree. And like going to your point of like during COVID, if I think one of the cool things of this of, of COVID was that if if you were doing well in your business or in your relationship, it probably only got stronger. And if you were doing poorly or there was something going on, there were some holes in the relationship or holes in your business or whatever, it probably went down. And you can say, well, shit, why, why did that happen? Let me learn from that. What, what didn't I keep up with to be able to, you know, navigate the challenges and do better in relationships or in business? Um, or you can say, well, pfft, blame it on covid covid just ruined me right and and we can't do that right we're not that's not how we're built but uh but definitely yeah i think it was a great i know a lot of people personally that their business took off during covid and i think in the fitness industry if you didn't make certain adjustments there and then and in the online space to take advantage of like the shift in the landscape you probably missed the boat I agree. you know and we were and that's something i wanted to dive into a little bit and that was going to be my next thing is what is Waldo's take moving forward with what you're seeing going on in the industry? Your personal take. I know we've talked about personal stuff yeah. with the online, all, but what's your personal take on online? And what is it that you want to see for yourself? I know we've talked a little bit about yeah. it, but when, what do you want to see yourself evolve from your business, the bond, which right here I'm rocking it. Let's hardcore. go. Let's go. That's my coach right there. Let's go. Where, where, where is this this business, strong business that you have that you've built strongly in person? Do you even have team pe team members working under you, training other clients and stuff? Yeah. Where's that big pivot? And I know you've done Zoom and stuff, but where's the big pivot for you when it comes to online? Where do you see yourself growing and adapting online? Uh, I So... You know, I, I've shared this with you before. I, you know, I'm, I'm an OG in the fitness industry. And when I was doing this, there was no online space. There was no Instagram. Like, and then Instagram popped up uh, and, you know, there were just pictures and there were videos. And, uh, and now, like, fast forward, like, 10 years, like, look how fast it's evolved. There's TikTok. There's Instagram. There's, I don't know, a whole mess of, a whole mess of different mediums, right? Uh, and at first, I was, I would, a lot of, like, fitness professionals kind of shot it down like okay there's no credibility on the online space there's a whole mess of like goofs pretending that they can help someone and they don't know what they're doing themselves and then like but like everything there have been some standout professionals that have been game changers that have entered the online space have been able with their passion with their knowledge uh, with their dedication been able to reach a larger audience and that's how transformation happens, right? Like I, you can tap into like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, you know, in my business, I can only tap into X amount of people. And as fulfilling and wonderful as that is, I think it'd be even greater if I can tap into three or four times as much as that. 
because again, my passion is to instill change. And, and, and I feel like, you know, if, if I, if I die and I think, and I look back and like, well, what's your legacy? What did I leave? I, I want to make sure I left a mark that, that touched several people. Uh, and, and I, and I'm like, what good is this knowledge and this ability to help people, you know, if I don't maximize it, if I don't go out and, and really make it, you know, a point to, to use it. So, you know, I think that I'm, I'm definitely going to be concentrating a lot more in, in the online space, um, as many coaches should be doing, uh, and either it's creating a hybrid system because I, I, I do still think that there's an incredible novelty to the personal touch, uh, you know, that, that there is when you are face to face and it's a catch 22 because I feel like the more, again, the more digital things become, the more people are going to appreciate the human touch and good service. When you go to a restaurant, when you, you know, have an interaction with someone, if that person is wonderful to you, if they treat you well, you're like, wow, that's what it feels like, right? Like that's what, you know, our, our biggest organ is skin. And when you touch skin, when you give someone a hug, a physical hug, it's a great feeling to, to, do, to give one and to receive one. And, um, and there's tons of physiological things that happen when that, when, when that, when that takes place. So uh, I think definitely some sort of hybrid and definitely taking advantage of the online space and the, the amount of geniuses out there, like, you know, yourself that, and you that, you know, can, can sort of open pathways and show people like, this is what you could do and you could do this and you could do that. There's so much out there. I didn't even know existed. Look, man, and we're just getting started. Yeah, I know. Look, there's, there's a uh, 21 year olds that we've met that are multimillionaires that they have started literally in different industries, in different industries with just their phone. And funny? they're young enough. And it's funny because I'm, I relate with you a lot in that aspect of both the digital and the physical. Because those are two things that, you know, the physical is going to be even more premium because that's going to happen. You know, right now you as, you as a trainer, it's going to be for someone to be one on one with you physically, it's going to cost a lot more. Yeah. And these kids right now just in the digital space, it's remarkable what they're doing, man. Like Amazon fulfillment, online training, like. It, the world has changed so much, and I don't think we're going to go back ever again. I agree 100%. Yeah. And this is the way I look at it. I say you have to look at these things as tools. It's what they are, right? Everything we have is a tool to enhance what we're currently doing in person, our whole experience. You know, I think the, the issues where you get a lot of people is when they get, you know, I'm not talking about overall digital, overall. I'm talking about just overall the concept of digital. Um I think digital is one of those things where people have to learn to use it to enhance what they currently have and not be scared because they're also going to jeopardize themselves. And then I think there's also a thing where it's like when people let it consume themselves over. Same thing like when people get addicted to consuming something and they get overconsumed, they overconsume it and then it becomes something that is not, it's more of an escape. Agreed. Right? You know, and people, you could tell that I'm talking about like people get hooked on social, the metaverse, all this stuff. And I tell people, you got to look at these things as tools. It's not for you to get lost in and, 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 and see it as a coping me mechanism. You have to use it as a tool to enhance what you're currently doing in your business, in your life, connection, meeting people faster to then be able to get them to where you want to get them. And that's that personal connection, you know, and being able to help somebody at scale. You know, and I think when people start seeing more of these things as tools um, to help you enhance what you currently have, I think that's when people can start more appreciating and realizing the beauty between both. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's definitely it's, it's perspective, right? I, I guess like, you know, if if you don't see it as that, if you see it as something grand and something bigger, you're like, well, you hesitate. How can I even enter this space? Where do I start? But if you see it, okay, this is just a tool. This is just an element of what I already do, and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here. Then it's more approachable and it's more sustainable, you know. Um, and I think something too is that may keep people back. I know that it's done it for me as well. It's you know sometimes you hesitate because you're like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be reaching a larger audience. They're going to be like overly critical of what I say, or they're going to be like, you know, are people going to agree with this? Or are how are people going to, are they going to like me? How are they going, going to take to my message? And sometimes if you just stay in that space, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, you're scared of like, you know, taking initiative and saying, you know what, who gives, who cares? And we're not for everybody. Yeah, I'm not exactly. We're not for everybody. LeBron James has his haters. Like he mm -hmm. can't make everybody happy. And Jordan had it in his day, in his day, in his day too. You know, so uh, you definitely can't please everybody, but you just have to know your target audience, cater to them, you know, and 
Yeah, all I'm saying is Waldo might be one of the first online insurance taking <laughs> coaches. <laughs> Woo! Wow, look at that mind blown. Yo. Yeah, I mean that's gonna that's a, that's <laughs> interesting, man. It just to think about. I wonder how Florida is gonna regulate that, or how they're gonna step into it, man. Or like, what were they gonna do for it? <sighs> yeah, I don't, that, I don't know. Yeah, because that's gonna be interesting. I don't know. Well, look, I think even in the in, in the something I didn't mention earlier is even look at the space of physical therapy. Like physical therapists. When I was in school, it was a bachelor's degree, and then they made it a master's degree, and then they made it a doctor degree. So true. And so, physical therapists now—they're um, literally taking you know patients to a certain level of health, and then they're like, "Okay, well, I can keep working with you and take you to another level, even if your insurance doesn't cover it." Um, and they're working as as basically strength coaches too. You've got some really incredible phys- PTs uh, out there and uh, they're getting into the space of, of strength training as well because, you know, I think, you know, with PTs, I'm not a physical therapist, so I, mean, I can't really talk on, it, talk on it too much, but there's always been, I am in the industry, there's always been this sort of like MO that, you know, the PT will take you up to this point and that's it, you know, but they can, they can take you places. Uh, there's so, always been a battle too. And there's, yeah, there's been a little bit of a battle. So, you know, now I think I don't know how I don't know how that can can affect uh, the whole the whole landscape, but I'm sure it will. So then, do you think that as time goes on, because that that's going to change the landscape? But I'm starting to see more like business models where they're incorporating like, all right, you don't have just a standard box gym. Now there's a portion of it that's just like physical Correct. therapy. Correct. So they can get that extra revenue. Correct. In. Correct. So that's that's. Do you think that will disrupt that business model, or I don't think so. I think that business model is a strong business model. I feel like that's what what a true good fitness forward, health forward, life centric facility should look like. You know, where you have performance on one end, and if any of those athletes, if any of those people get hurt or they're nursing an injury, that they have someone in house that they can trust, and you know, a good physical therapist to do that, and um, you know, a lot of physical. Therapists get in it and they're in the clinical setting, like, you know, immediately post-surgery. And then some PTs like more so the performance and uh, side of things and they want to work with healthier athletes. Uh, So I don't think it'll disrupt. I think that they can coexist very nicely. And and in fact, maybe uh, all three collaborate where you have the PT, the trainers, the health coach, the dietitian, and, you know, a, a full encompassing system. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So for you, Waldo, personally, what is one thing that you would like to see change? Not not later, not to, not the next day, but right now. If it can change right now in the health and fitness industry, what would be that one first thing? And I'm sure you might have a few, but what's one prominent thing that you would change right now that you want to see change? That's a, that's a tough question, man, for, for a last question. I think... Uh I think at the core of it, uh, there are still a lot of fitness professionals that are in it for the wrong reasons. Uh, and, you know, the, for very selfish reasons, they get in and uh, they want to sell supplements that they don't even believe in, in themselves. And, and they're very money hungry because of the opportunities that they, 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 they have to, to get there. And so you get someone in really good shape. Uh, doing a couple exercises with some bands and say, listen, this will get you looking like me and it's lies. Uh, and there's a lot of deceit and and, and, and and a misleading system there. And so I wish that could change. I don't know if that could or, or couldn't, but I worry for a lot of future generations, young girls that, you know, are looking at, at you know, influencers or other fitness professionals, quote unquote, that are photoshopping their bodies, that are photoshopping their videos and looking a way that, you know, they, they do that and then they like, Sleeping. yeah, and then they like, and then they have like a slice of pizza while they're, while they're doing it. And in the meantime, like the 13 year olds are saying, well, why can't I do that? Like, I guess I can't eat pizza. And like on the other, on the flip side, you're talking about eating disorders, image dysmorphia, and a, a lot of the byproducts of, of what's going on right now. So I would say that. I would agree. I would agree very, very much because we're, we're yeah. in a time where there could be a lot of misled information yeah. and also a lot of uh, tampering with what's what's actually real yeah. and what's not, yeah. you know, what actually is correct, what's not. Agreed. And we're in a time like that where that's that stuff is going on. So I, li- I like that answer, man. Where can people find you? Where can people connect with you? Um, as we start wrapping things up, I want to leave that floor off to you and then we're going to get into some, some burnaround questions. So... 
www.bondmia.com uh, is my website, uh, Bond MIA on Instagram. Uh, you can shoot me an email or DM through there. Uh, reach out to Anthony. We're connected here, so he can get you to me as well. Uh, and yeah. Love it. Bro, the, uh, I saw with Waldo that he's like, so that way the crazies, they want to reach out to me. They go through Anthony <laughs> go first. Through Anthony. Anthony bets them Anthony out. Bet them. Oh, I saw with Waldo. You're, you're my filter, exactly. You got to call him first and see, <laughs> see if you're the right candidate. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, my line, you know, that's perfect. <laughs> hey, he, he remained his funnel right there. Man. No, that's it. Exactly. That's it. Oh, my exactly. God, I love it. All right, burn it round time. You ready? Yeah. You ready? Let's go. Let's All right, it. question number one, what is the craziest and wildest experience that you've ever had as a health and fitness coach? Ooh. Uh, be craziest. honest. And yeah. wildest experience yeah. as a fitness coach. It could be anything. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I... I Okay, so there's there's this one time I, I was working with a client I'm not with anymore, but um, she's like, hey, uh, you know, my husband really wants to meet you. Um, he, in fact, he wants to do a gym in the house, and maybe you can consult with you so that you can help him with the layout of the gym or whatever. And um, you know, why don't why don't you meet him? And I'm like, okay, perfect. So I go. The guy was super nice, and he's like, yeah, like. You know, I, I want to do a gym right here. And I can see him kind of like scanning me up and down and left and right and like whatever. And I was, you know, me, like I'm super professional. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to be like, you know, eyes dotted and T's crossed. And, you know, this is what I came for. And um, whatever. I, I said goodbye. It worked out. And then I get a call from her later on. And she's like, hey, yeah, uh, I can't train with you anymore. Uh, my husband says that, you know, he doesn't trust doesn't trust me training with you anymore. And I'm like, okay, uh, why? So, well, he's just a very jealous guy. And I'm like, you know, okay, well, what can I do about that? You know, I'm sorry. Like, tell him that, you know, this is a super professional relationship. I felt bamboozled. I literally felt like I walked into a booby trap and it was just like, what is this? You know, the whole assessment. none of it was real. It was legitimately, I felt bamboozled through that experience. But yeah. And how a, long were you training? It was a short term thing. It was like maybe like a couple months. But still. But yeah. And then the guy out of nowhere wanted to scope you out. Yeah, he wanted to scope Unless, me out. It was a setup, man. Yeah. I, maybe he saw a little bit too excited for you. That's uh, or, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But but I'm like that. That could have been dangerous. Like that could have been like, what if this guy went like crazy? Oh, was a like, there yeah, was like, yeah. What are you doing with my I wife? I felt bamboozled. I was like, this was bizarre. But yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what what that. I know. I know. I know. I don't even know what that. I know. I know that. So th that that's one of many things that came to mind. I I I, I don't know how far we can go here. So that Bro, that's right. Give us there. give us another story. Give us something else there. <laughs> What's one of your top hitters? Top three. Oh, man, I don't know. Take it as far as you want. Uh, let's see here. Amanda's so, going to listen. Oh, <laughs> Amanda's going to listen. Baby, don't look at this video. <laughs> so um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I mean, th there, was a, there was a scenario where I was working with a client um, also, and, and uh, she, she would show up to the gym and wear, like, like very little shorts. Right. And there's never been a dr like a dress code that I knew of in the gym. Right. Like people can wear shorts and women can wear shorts. Like what is the, what is what is the appropriate length of of a short? A right? out here. Yeah, like is it like, oh, it's six inches. You got to go back home and change. Like I don't I didn't know there was a there was a rule. But no training today. No training today. Right. So she would wear the shorts, whatever. And like because of because I don't think there was a written rule, management was kind of putting it on me. It was like, hey, like, you know. Your client shorts are really, really short. Now, I don't know what my client did for a living. I, I At the time, I didn't know what she did. And so uh, getting into it little by little, she uh, was, was wearing these little shorts and was like, oh, like today I just want to stretch, whatever. And I'm like, okay, um, but no, we have to train first. And she's like, no, I just want to stretch. And uh, so I'm like, okay, fine, we'll do that. So I'm being like all proper and finding like, so when you go to gyms, there's a lot of, especially at Equinox, there's like all these all little. All those putting a towel. Yes, exactly. Over. There's all these, dude, there's, there's all these little towels, right? Like all these little <laughs> towels that, that, that are available. And so I'm like, shit, like she's wearing these little shorts. Like this is going to be a, a, a show. Like if I don't really cover her up, like I'm going to, I'm going to stretch her. So I went ahead and I grabbed like 40 towels and I started putting them everywhere. She looked like a mummy. Before I started stretching her, like she was all, all wrapped up like to her neck. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be like as proper as possible. And she's like taking them off and I'm like, putting them on and 
whatever. Like at the end of the day, she she I don't know um, what what happened. If someone told her something, if management like said something, and she was like, you know bothered by it or not but i never really saw her again but in that same stretch uh, stretch session i remember she would like turn around and like moan and make movements and like it was probably the most uncomfortable wildest like experience because oh do i drop the towel exactly i'm like <laughs> so yes bizarre but again there's more stories i've been doing this shit for gym. 15 years this yes this in the middle of the gym oh my god so uh yeah okay man moving on to the next exactly. question so all those trained porn stars yeah now it's yeah. only fans going on Set only ups. fans <laughs> um all right so wh- <laughs> what is one major uh key that you can give young entrepreneurs going into business for themselves i love that brian <laughs> looked to Dude, the side honestly, to think about this i'm like next. talk about pivot right like now you're making me do a strong pivot we're just getting we're into the hot about we're pivot, bro. Bro. You say, okay so so great 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 about great that with the great with star. the porn star but what would you tell our young audience yes. that's watching this show <laughs> <laughs> that's watching this that's show that's why it's called oh. sweat it out bro yeah exactly. no all the sweaty i'm already guys. sweating i'm like i'm like we're getting in here anthony you best love sweating because you're gonna go amanda's sweating because she's gonna listen oh yeah you're ruining this for me man <laughs> so edit that so um young audience i think it's it's very cliche what i'm about to say but it's fearlessly follow your passion and the things that make you happy right and that are fulfilling to you right it's like i, I i'm gonna Brian, look at why you laughing over here <laughs> <laughs> oh my it. god bro but if you want to be the best porn star what you want to be is a porn star you be, fulfilling. be the fulfilling. best porn star with like porn star businesses and like a setup where there's like multiple only fans women yeah. working under you and like just be the In best person, porn star. online online the digital premium pimp. the digital pimp oh yeah. my god exactly exactly Anthony, what are you gonna ask him bro what's the last question you're gonna ask him i had two more well i actually have two more for me and then you have another one too you're gonna have to think Anthony, of something just give him one more bro. all right all right this is the last one there's nothing for me to tell <laughs> he's like i'm done i'm done bro. what, what am i gonna ask him right gonna, oh what God. am i gonna ask him bro all right question if you can only pick one tool to work out with for the rest of your life <laughs> what, the f- Anthony, what are you asking <laughs> this guy man what would it be a shake weight no i'm kidding <laughs> um a barbell a barbell I had a feeling we we're gonna pick. Yeah, I go with I go with the barbell. Like I mean, I, I feel like obviously we you can train with no tools uh, and and have you know do calisthenics, but a barbell because then you could do calisthenics with no tool. You said one one piece of equipment, right? Mm-hmm. So barbell and can I get my plates and and I'll be good. Done. Yeah, that's your tool. That's my that's tool. Love that's it. Tool. All right, you want me to do well, another one? Do another one. All right, I'll do another. And then one. I'm gonna close. And then it. Anthony's gonna do his his last little thing there. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> bro, I love this. This, this is great. Why don't you bring Waldo in before, bro? <laughs> I know, bro. Bro, next time I'm going to bring a whole bunch of towels for us. Oh, exactly. <laughs> You're like, what is that for? Bro, that's, that's so funny. Um, All right, so. The mummy. The, the mummy. It. And she didn't tell you anything about The mummy that? returns. No, I, she was sweating because I'm sure she was hot too. So, I, so, so, I was so you're like, throwing all these little towels? I was throwing these towels. I mean, a towel here, a towel there, a towel <laughs> in the groin, a towel here. And put, you know, so. I think she knew what was going on. I mean, I was trying to trying to cover her up, but that was against her intention. So, okay. And then you know the guy, the trainers at our gym, they're probably ah, getting yeah, that every, shit on, and you know how it is. I know, I know. <laughs> my whole head, they love to bother just to get in there. <laughs> all right, and then all right. So this is my this is gonna be a serious one. <laughs> what do you tell people who who do not do leg days? Who <laughs> do not do that? <laughs> <laughs> those bro workouts. So serious, what do you tell those bro. bro workout guys? Oh, that's so funny, man. Uh, that's a good question. Actually. That's actually a good question. Like, I don't even know how to even approach that anymore. Uh, do legs, man. Like, I mean, just fucking, fucking do grab legs. Your barbell. Grab Squat, a barbell. Bro. I'm like, I think, like, you know, you want to hold up, hold yourself up. So, uh, do your legs. Actually, it's it's funny, but I think that's something that a lot of like high school kids that are getting into to training and they want to like look good they just focus on their chest and their arms yeah but have you ever like exaggerated something and then and then work back from there like say okay this is what i want to do but let me start at the end goal and work back and if you and, you, and if and if you just say okay well just work on your chest and arms and just imagine yourself with the biggest chest and the biggest arms out and nothing else behind you look ridiculous right like you look so ridiculous so you know i think that's a challenge that they have is like that's all they want to work on and at the end of it 
you know, a strong foundation is, is working on your legs. Like, you know, the, where you could lift the most is actually in your squat and in your deadlifts. And based on that sort of stimulus, that's where your back actually grows the most and your shoulder that's grows so the most. Like if you, if you told me I have to focus on one exercise, right? Like one, instead of one tool, one piece of equipment to work on, if you told me like, what was, what would be one exercise that you would work on? If it's the only exercise you can do, and I would say the deadlift. And that's it. That, that would be my bread and butter. Works your legs, works your back, works your arms, works your shoulders, works your strength. Like you can go many reps, you can go low reps, get strong, condition, you name it. And it's super functional. Brian's asking because he's been following a mobility program there, right? Is that what you told me the other Knees day? Knees to toes. I follow that guy. Knees to toes. You've never seen that guy? No, I'm not, I'm not sure. You have the program there? Yeah, have it here. Take it out. Have it here. Let's, let's have Waldo guy. assess it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, bro, Joe Rogan approves this guy. Oh, yeah? So it must be <laughs> legit. I mean, if Joe Rogan's approving it, I I'm, mean, not, I'm not going to lie. I'm a Joe Rogan fan. I'm a huge yeah, one. Bro, this is where I found the guy. Yeah. So Joe Rogan, he's an MMA fighter. Uh, he, it's, it's not knees over toes guy? Yeah, that's the guy. Oh, I know. So you I know, know exactly who that is. Yes. So Joe's knees are all he's banged legit. up. Yeah, doing MMA, all that he's shit. And, and Joe did a program with this guy. And he's like, bro, my knees are 100% back to where that. So he's legit. For mobility. Because, you know, you're sitting all day, yeah. you know, you're not doing the proper stretches. Uh, I said, you know what? I want to do some mobility. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get hit 60 and wipe my own ass. Yeah, right, exactly. Right? What else are we here for? So I got this guy's program and it's it's going well. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm feeling better, but feel more, you know. So can you get your knees over your toes? Yeah, I could do there it. There we go. <laughs> I, before, I, before it was tough. Yeah. Now I'm at a point where I can actually do it. I feel a little bit yeah. better. And I, he he transitions you. So the first part you do no weight. So you're doing, I guess, the foundation of what you were talking about. And then after you start doing weights. Okay. So now my legs are going to get jacked. Yeah, because you have foundation. Now I have foundation. I think I think that whole knees over toes is is brilliant because going back to like my younger coaching days, probably the, the worst cue and most common cue that trainers were giving people was don't let your knees go over your toes. Right. And so what did that create? It created a whole mess of people that would squat with their toes up. And like their ass way back and not letting their knees track over their toes. Natural shit. Which is a natural movement. It's I a natural, didn't, I didn't it's know a natural that. movement. I didn't know that. And so they would say, don't let your knees go over your toes, but they were missing one part, which was just to keep your yep. heels down on the ground, right? You can let your knees go forward as far as your heel stays down on the mm -hmm. ground. The second that lifts and you have instability. But for such a long time, I think knees over toes was one. And then you know, I may go out, get out, finish this podcast and go start an Instagram uh, handle and call it uh, Shoulders Back just because that's another overcued thing where people would just would do everything like shoulders retracted. You know, you keep your shoulders retracted yeah, the entire just time found his online and, you row, and it's like it's like you're constantly shoulder retraction. Super overcued. That's, you know, like you don't, people have to do do, that? you don't have to do that. You have to you have to allow the shoulders to actually go forward and then go full range of motion, allow them to go back. And there are some exercises where you have to maintain like a neutral spine and, and, and some sort of postural awareness. But the shoulders retracted thing, like, is probably the most overcued thing I've ever heard of. Or you gotta come out with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, you have to help me. You're the, you're the creative guy. We're gonna help yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna I'll, help I'll you. hire you guys. And then we're down. gonna do a stretching program. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> And we send towels to your house. That's there we go. The see, yeah. You see, now we're thinking. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. Just I give them some towels. Yeah. We're be, again an opportunist, trying to trying to find the, the silver lining. Where can we That's go it. with this? Pivot. Yeah. As long as you, as long as we don't have to go into the the person's house and the husband is there. That's the only thing. Well, yeah. Then we all die. That's the end of that. <laughs> then we're done. Then we're done. And there is no program. <laughs> then there is no, no program. Yeah, no, you gotta. <laughs> Do you have any funny stories with Anthony? Ah oh, man, Anthony. Uh, I love this kid. I'm not gonna lie. Catch that on camera too. Um, so when Anthony started at Equinox, he was he was assigned as my mentee. Like I had this responsibility to look over this young gun um, and show him the ways. That was for a whole year, right? For a whole year. For a whole year. And you know, he he was great because he was still the guy he is today. He's a very curious, humble, um, inquisitive individual who likes to learn and that was I knew he would be successful because of that he had those characteristics and those are some things that you just can't teach people you can't teach someone to be curious you can't teach someone to do those things you can tell them to but he had that when he was younger and uh so I mentored him through a week showed him the ropes and went on did you know not over a week through the course of a year did really well and uh and went on to have a lot of success and then even more so now uh but back then, I remember him telling me, like, yo, when I when I make it, 
I'm gonna be able to afford you, and you're and you're gonna be able to coach me. And this fucker shows up, <laughs> you know, in my life again, like like two months ago or a month ago, and he's like, I can afford you now. <laughs> I can afford you now. I want you to coach me. And and it's a beautiful thing to come full circle, right? Because that must have been how many years ago? Like Dude, re- at least I seven. At Twenty one. Yeah, yeah so, I'll be thirty now. So uh, seven, eight years ago. Easily. Right. So that was a while ago, but so I'm gonna go all out here. So there was a certification to do an, an FMS certification, right? So yeah, that trip was wild. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't even open my mouth. He's already he's already gonna preface what I'm about to say. So Anthony, no foreshadowing. Let, no, no, let, it, let it go. This trip in. was wild. So so Anthony's like, okay, well, you know. I want to go and 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 I'm like okay well let's let's make it a point it, we went with another friend of I, of ours who was a trainer at the time too and so uh, we went to Atlanta to to do the certification and and you know and I only saw Anthony at the time within the four walls of Equinox like the the work setting right I didn't know this fucker was a wild animal right so <laughs> had I known I would have said Anthony that's your cage over there but so <laughs> we we go to Atlanta. And, oh you know, we God. do the first day of the certification, went really well, a lot of learning. He was his usual self, like trying to get, you know, all the questions in and learn a lot and just super humble, shaking everybody's hand and just, you know, just a lovely persona. And then we're like, yo, let's let's go to dinner after. Let's let's go. Let's go grab dinner. And so we went to dinner. Uh, we had tons of fun there. And they're like, well, let's let's go. Let's go do something else. Let's go find a hot spot in this place. Right. So we end up going to some random ass club in Atlanta. Right. And um we're there and we're trying to get our bearings like you know who are you what is this atlanta crowd like right we're from miami we're from dade county we like we know how to get down and i don't know that we're loved everywhere else because we're we could be you know rowdy but so we show up there and this kid i like lost him i couldn't i didn't know where he was at some point i think i went to go get drinks and i i wish i'd say that he was drunk or that he already had drinks in him but when i look around anthony's like on the stage like getting down with it like dancing behind girls and i'm like who let this kid loose like when did this happen you know so and i'll leave it there <laughs> and i'll leave it there i, I can't say more <laughs> oh man but yeah oh man thank you right. he's like he's thank you i'll leave it there that, he, uh, brian's like that's consistent with with, with what i know <laughs> so yeah oh man Andy, just tell him his last question bro oh all right now it's another big pivot the, the final question that we always say What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners in one single sentence? Keep listening to the Sweat It Out podcast. I mean, I feel like you guys are doing a great job here. So you're bringing a lot of you know wealth of information and stuff um, to people and raising awareness on on many subjects. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, thank you for having me on here and and giving me the opportunity to to talk a little bit about what I do. Uh, and I'm rooting for you guys to keep doing, you know, what you do. Thank you, brother. We appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. Man, what a podcast. Guys, if you got value out of this, just one single thing, take it, apply it to your life. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but today, the moment you listen to this and you jump off, start taking action into it. Guys, reach out to, to my coach, Walder. He's amazing. If you guys have any questions, obviously, he wants you to go through me first and then to him. So Don't let's, forget that. Let's stuff. make sure we do that. And, um, most importantly, just make sure you start taking action right away. Guys, drop a rating, leave a review, like, subscribe, share, because the more love you show us, the more love we can show back. Till next time on the Sorted Out Podcast.